This video is brought to you by Daslane. Gunslingers, snipers, sharpshooters, they're the kind of guys you don't want calling your number on the battlefield because they could potentially swing the momentum of a fight with just a few well placed rounds. Plus, with the best of them, you typically won't see where they're shooting from until it's too late. Oh, man, you shot me in the face. What's up guys, my name is RBG and welcome to another Transformers Top 10 video. This is something where we take the best and worst elements of the live action films and comprise them in the top 10 rankings. For today's video, I wanted to present a list of the best marksmen slash sharpshooters in the live action TF universe. This is something we rarely even talk about because the films mainly consist of close quarters brawls and most of the shooting sequences we do get are Autobot and Decepticon shootouts. Whether it be by six shooter, machine gun, or rocket launcher, the following gunslingers never miss a shot. They've easily doubled up on their kill counts with pinpoint accuracy which is why they've been featured in this video. So without further ado, let's dive into this list and paint a bullseye on the top contenders. Number 10. The Spensor Man, it seems like just yesterday this guy made it at number 2 on my top 10 ridiculous robots list. Just look at him. He's a product placement that relishes in his absurdity. Anyways, you already know the story, Dispenser is a byproduct of the big Mission City battle. During a game of keep away, Sam with Wiki accidentally activated the AllSpark while running from the Decepticons. The artifact's radiation animated an SUV steering wheel, an Xbox 360, and a Mountain Dew soda machine into robots. For a vending machine, Dispenser is surprisingly big. His head slightly resembles that of Megatron, while he has four arms and mandibles like Frenzy, Optimus Prime's feet, and a cannon that looks like it belongs to Ironhide. He may not seem like much, but I had to give this Frankenstein bot the 10th spot because of the few shots he let off shortly after being brought to life. We see him shoot off a few Mountain Dew rounds at a couple of off-screen civilians before busting a cap into a hot chick. Number 9. Starscream over the years, we watched him try to fulfill his quest of becoming the leader of the Decepticons, and this iteration of the character was able to do so for a short period of time after Megatron had succumbed to all sparse energy. Arguably the most treacherous robot in the Decepticon faction, Starscream is one of those characters who prefers to make his attacks count. That's mainly because he only shoots when the conditions are in his favor, which was made apparent when he stealthily took down several F-22 Raptors flying through Mission City. Due to him transforming into a raptor himself, Starscream was able to escape the jets as they were firing back at him. Prior to that, he performed a devastating attack that left Bumblebee crippled with no legs. So as you can see, our boy can be quite a marksman from a distance. Unfortunately, this tactic doesn't do so well when he's in close proximity of his enemies. As you can see, unless he has the upper hand in a shootout, he's pretty much worthless. In TF2, while interrogating Sam with Wiki, Optimus and Bumblebee barged in guns blazing, and all Starscream could do was turn tail and run while Megatron did all the work. Sometimes cowards do survive. Number 8 Hot Rod. Now, this is one of those picks that I was very indifferent about because he doesn't really do much killing with his firearms. But make no mistake, our boy is about that marksman life, which is made apparent by him being seen carrying dual multi barreled handguns. In the Bayverse, he's Bumblebee's brother in arms and was active in World War II on the Allied side, where they fought against the Nazi party. In one mission, him and B sneaked a squad of US soldiers into a German occupied building for a successful surprise attack with guns blazing. He speaks with a thick French accent due to being stuck in France for so long, much to his own embarrassment. Fun fact. He's the only Transformer in all the films who's shown to speak in vehicle mode. Please, mademoiselle, don't do that! What? Je m'appelle Ortrud! Christ alive, you're one of them! Be quiet! Besides the multi barreled handguns, he possesses one of the most overpowered weapons in the Bayverse. He wields a special gun which can briefly slow down time. And I know what you're thinking, this weapon isn't destructive compared to the other guns on this list, but hear me out. If used right, it can be one of the most effective, which is shown multiple times throughout the film. In one scene, it's used to hold off TRF soldiers as a distraction to help Cade and Vivian escape. And during an epic fight in Quintessa's chamber, he uses it to save Hound by freezing Megatron. With the big Decepticon baddie briefly frozen in a time bubble, Hound lets loose a rain of gunfire that managed to knock Megatron back. 
So as you can see, this time freezing bubble gun thingy is very useful and downright brutal if used correctly. Coming in at number 7 is Megatron. The founder of the Decepticon Uprising and their most feared leader, Megatron is arguably one of the best and most resilient characters in the lineup. No matter how much his body gets mangled and overcharged with Energon, he always manages to make a return. You've heard me go out of my way to crap on this version since he's becoming nothing more than a secondary character to other big baddies. I always find it strange that he could say something like, Even in death there is no command but mine. And a few seconds later, we see him kneeling down to the Falling and calling him Master. My Master, I have failed you. He's a walking contradiction. But despite all of his obvious mischaracterizations, the films managed to highlight some of his signature traits, like his expert marksmanship. I mean, he's obviously top tier when it comes to close quarters combat, but a key component to his arsenal is his fusion cannon. Drawing energy from an unknown interdimensional source, the fusion cannon can fire a gamma irradiated plasma at a target. Megatron uses this bad boy on several occasions in the first film, most notably to injure Jazz and to knock Optimus Prime into a building. After his resurrection, he still possesses the weapon, but in a more classical way where it's mounted to his arm. During his battle with Optimus Prime in the forest, he uses it to knock him back, shattering the Autobot leader's mouthpiece. Unfortunately, this same devastating weapon is used against him and blows half of his face off. Fast forward to Dark of the Moon, we see the crippled Decepticon High Lord rocking a handheld fusion cannon that resembles a shotgun. He doesn't really do much with it until the tail end of the film when he shoots Sentinel Prime in the back. Besides those instances, there's not much to write home about. He gets a more faithful rendition of his fusion cannon in The Last Night, but it gets cut off at the end of the movie. Talk about being disarmed. Taking the sixth spot is Bumblebee. Arguably the face of the live action TF universe, B is the only Autobot who's managed to survive every movie without dying, so much to the point that he was able to land his own solo film. He's probably the most sympathetic member of the Autobots, but don't let that soft personality fool you. When it's time to put up, B is ready to put any Decepticon down. Fun fact, before each and every successful kill in the movies, he emphatically lowers his mask. That mask intends to be a warning signal for when he intends to bring the pain. Before shooting Brawl, he snaps it down. Before turning the tables on Soundwave, he faces the camera and snaps it down. In TF2, he showcases his sharpshooting skills when his partner Sam found himself overwhelmed by evil kitchen appliances. By the time TF3 rolled around, B was a fully stocked armory. Thanks to the records, he has a new stealth mode that allowed him to shoot various missiles while he was still in vehicle form. The mode was utilized during a high speed chase with the Dreadbots. In TF4, B gets a fusion cannon equipped with a pincer that looks awfully similar to Megatron's from TF2. With the help of Strafe, he jabs the pincer through Stinger's neck and blasts the cheap knockoff's head clean off his shoulders. As mentioned earlier, he worked alongside Hot Rod during World War II, and you can see how much artillery he was packing. So yeah, he's kind of a big deal. I'm tired of people messing with me. Rolling in at number 5 is Optimus Prime. What's understood doesn't need to be explained. We all know that Optimus Prime is the most well-rounded character in the TF franchise. Need a master swordsman to cut your enemy down to ribbons? You got Optimus. How about a brute who's formidable in hand-to-hand -hand combat? Your red and blue Robo Jesus has you covered. He's just got so many things going for him that makes him the complete package. One of the best aspects of his skill set is his mastery in shooting. Though he prefers the use of his dual energon swords in combat, his primary weapon is the Ion Blaster. During the Battle of Mission City, he managed to get off a single shot of his Ion Blaster at Megatron before he was sent flying into a building. Two years later, during a high speed chase, he used it against the giant Decepticon Demolisher by putting several point blank shots into his head. After Demolisher crashes, Optimus finishes him off by shooting him through the eye. The guy is pretty savage with his shooting game. Several days later, he shot at Megatron and Starscream while performing some sick Cybertronian acrobatics before blasting the Decepticon leader through the wall. Later on in Dark of the Moon, we see him go on an all out shooting spree before defacing Shockwave. But after that, there's not much shooting done by Optimus. By the time TF4 rolled around, he went in full medieval mode, opting to go with a sword instead of a gun. Number 4. Crosshairs This Autobot paratrooper has a knack for catching his enemies by surprise, either by dropping in from above or with a lightning fast draw of his sidearm blasters. He's one of the sharpest shots on the battlefield, so the Autobots know he'll always hit his targets. Or at least that's what it says on the back of his toy box. If there's one thing I can say is that he's definitely one of the most overcautious and selfish Autobot members who thinks only of his own self-gain. 
but what he lacks in teamwork he makes up with his fast armory that could be incredibly dangerous in the wrong hands. He's extremely careful in his targeting, not wanting to waste a single shot. Although he made it known of his desire to be a loner, he gleefully joined the rest of the Autobots in shooting up the KSI building in TF4. During a wild ride on a stolen assault carrier, he put his two sidearm blasters into action mode, blasting two of Lockdown's orbital assault carriers while showcasing his badass paratrooping skills. Years after Optimus went on his intergalactic voyage, Crosshairs had taken refuge at Kay's junkyard. When the Decepticons and TRF discovered where they were hiding, he and the others rolled out to a nearby town for an epic shootout. During this shootout, he and Drift teamed up against the much larger Onslaught, with him blasting their enemy in the chest before Drift decapitated him. In the final battle, he teamed up with Hot Rod as they shared an orbital assault carrier and engaged the airborne Decepticons. Not bad for a guy who prefers to sit back while everyone else does all the dirty work. Coming in at number 3 is Hound. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I'm not too high on this particular character. He blabbers too much for my taste and all of his lines are corny. I was already bitter because it always felt like he was made to fill an Ironhide spot as the mouthy shooter of the Autobots. But I digress. I have avoid putting him on every top 10 list, but if I excluded him off of this one, I'd just be lying to myself. Despite my personal feelings about this character, he's quite the marksman who's racked up an impressive kill count since his debut. During a battle in Hong Kong, he fought tooth and nail to protect the humans and the sea from Galvatron's forces with Bumblebee's support. He's probably the most proficient in terms of weapons. The dude's a very resourceful Autobot if you didn't notice. After taking out a group of KSI Transformers with a grenade, he ran out of ammo, but fought on using his hat, belt, and even his cigar. In Transformers The Last Night, he didn't do much, but he managed to get off a few shots at Megatron, and later in the Cybertron chambers, he took on the Decepticon High Lord again, this time with the aid of Hot Rod's Time Bubble Gun, combining the firepower of his minigun that resulted in a devastating attack. Gonna blow your head off, Megatron. Locking in that number 2 spot is Lockdown. This black spark bounty hunter only works for the highest bidder in the galaxy. Although his price is not cheap, his performance is the best in what he does. He was a ruthless mercenary who had affiliated himself with the creators as a Cybertronian bounty hunter, which led to his earthly presence when he was sent by his higher ups to capture Optimus Prime, which he did with little effort. As you can see, he's well equipped for hunting. Not only does he have a giant cannon mode, his head has multiple other configurations such as a monocular long range scanner. He also has a tactical faceplate that gives him readings on his prey. During his introduction, he showed off his tactical skills during a cooperative missions with Cemetery Wind. He waits as the human task force engages Ratchet as he tries to flee. After the severely damaged medic explains to the humans why he was running, Lockdown opens fire on him, severely damaging the robot. This is a dirty strategy he would repeat later in the film as well. When Optimus is battling Galvatron, Lockdown uses his long range head cannon to ambush the Autobot leader from behind and add him to his collection of knights. He doesn't really do anything else in terms of shooting, but I think it's safe to assume that these features played a part in him capturing the legendary knights and commandeering their ship. Now, if there's one thing that we can take from all of these deadly shooters, it's that their poor victims should have watched their back when fighting in this endless robot war. And this philosophy also applies when it comes to your own personal security. You might have found your personal information had been compromised because you were too lazy to use a different password for multiple accounts, causing you to leave behind noticeable footprints for endless waves of hackers to track. That wouldn't have happened if you used Dashlane. Now I'm guilty of being the lazy sap who reuses the same password over and over because I don't feel like typing in different characters and memorizing them. On the flip side, that makes it easy for me to access my accounts. But the downside to this is that all of my information is just asking to be hacked. Thankfully, Dashlane does an excellent job of generating strong passwords for all my accounts on various devices. Instead of having to dig deep into my memory banks or resetting passwords, Dashlane stores and autofills them for me, keeping my personal info from being targeted. By using their top of the line security, your passwords can easily be updated. They even go out of their way to tell you how many times you've used said passwords. So to make sure your accounts are safe, you should sign up to Dashlane Premium. By going to www.dashlane.com slash rbg, you get a 30 day free trial, or you can use the promo code as seen on the video to get 10% off of a Dashlane Premium. Those links can also be found in the description box below. But with that said, let's put a bullseye on the top contender on this list. Number 1. Ironhide It was a close call, but the top spot has to go to my boy Ironhide. 
He's the weapon specialist who just couldn't wait to show off his cannons. The old Autobot who's built tough and made to bust Decepticon chops. This guy is by far the best shooter on this list, and in the movie, Ironhide's guns alone have 10,000 CG parts each, and they aren't just there for show. After Sam, Michaela, and his parents were captured by Sector 7, Ironhide got a real good chance to show off his cannons when he used them to create a shockwave. Later on, you can see him using both blasters in a sick looking somersault to avoid Brawl's incoming missile. Fast forward a couple years later, he was able to immobilize the massive demolisher by shooting out his will. Unfortunately, these awesome weapons would be destroyed. During the big battle in Egypt, he was heavily damaged and had to run for his life, ejecting his weapons in the process when a US Air Force B-1B Lancer tried to bomb the place. Thankfully, this didn't hold him back because around the time Dark of the Moon rolled around, Q had created two badass blasters called the Heavy Iron 2.0 Mech Tech Rifles. Sadly, he doesn't get to use the weapons. During a Mexican standoff with the Decepticon Dreadbots, he drops them. The Dreads try to do an underhanded sneak attack, but Sideswipe capitalizes by kicking one of his blasters to Ironhide, who uses it to shoot the Decepticon Punk in the face. There are many other instances of him having a blast with his arm blasters in the comics, but I think you guys get my point. When it comes to guns, Ironhide is shooter supreme. That's why he's numero uno. Blast is missed. But with that said, I'm gonna end this video. It was tough making this list because as I said earlier, most of the fights we see in the TF Bay films are close quarters. Even the few instances of shooting we see consist of shots being made at point blank range, so yeah. But anyways, who would you guys add to the list? Do you agree with mine? Or do you have a different spot you rank each contender? Let me know down in the comments below. If you've made it this far, follow your comment up with hashtag Bullseye. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Jump